Hello beta testers, Marvel's Avengers celebrates its one year anniversary. And if there's one thing it effortlessly succeeds at, it's being an impossible try not to laugh challenge, with the same bugs it launched with still present a year later in its current build. Whether it's getting stuck in place, your enemy getting stuck, players still having to reload checkpoints hoping that the enemy just spawns properly, believe it or not, bugs aren't even the biggest of this game's issues. When people tried this a year ago, their instant conclusion was that this is incomplete. This game, and I'm being courteous, lacked variety. Fighting two villains and a bunch of robots was no one's idea of an exciting superhero game. But what Crystal Dynamics did was slap the Avengers name on a Kamala Khan game and stripped the super from the heroes terrible traversal that makes movement a genuine chore, a clear afterthought, and a paradoxically bad contribution when it, when it would have been possible to accidentally do better than this. The Batman Arkham games, the Insomniac Spider-Man game, laid the most crowd-pleasing blueprints bare. But Sunset Overdrive would have also showed them how fun traversal can be. Just Cause allows for seamless grappling hook into parasailing into wingsuit transitions. Even Mario games have movement down to a science and have nailed movement since Super Mario 64 back in 1996. What's this game's excuse? I've been re-watching V's trailer wondering why this game has more interesting methods of traversal than a superhero game. But then I remember that the Lego Marvel games do traversal better than this one does too. Ooh. Destiny and its wonderful maps built for the Sparrow to allow Guardians to zip and boost and pull off tricks and just traverse in style was something that Crystal Dynamics saw and said, nah, you can jump to your location. And they'll eat it up. Because Marvel, we put Marvel on it. Crystal Dynamics was nerfing this game as early as one week after it launched, only to continue with a series of nerfs and a hilarious declaration before one of their upcoming nerfs that because XP was granting skills too fast, it's confusing and overwhelming for the player. Okay. <laughs> only for them to later introduce XP boosters that the player can now purchase. Who could have seen this coming? Oh wait, we all did, because we're not shills, or stupid. How out of touch would you need to be to tell people unironically what is and isn't a big deal to them? Paying consumers, like what kind of mommy still pays your bill shit is that? Clap for that anniversary nameplate though, while enemies still spawn under the map. Thank you, Daddy Crystal Dynamics. So $40 game, $15 skins, $12 takedowns, $10 individual battle pass for each hero. Ugh. Pay the moat, snow and moat wheel. Pay boosters, how do you feel? Your asshole about to need ice cause you're bent over trying to conceal. A one year long disgrace by alcoholics shit faced. If you like this, get tested cause of COVID symptoms, no taste. Scott Abel said cloning labs weren't just weeks away. He said training room was in Confusing and overwhelming one day, nerf XP gains now bitch you pay Jesus Christ I'd rather play Genshin, Eastern developers I guess you win. Go, 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 that's the sound of a defender, they say the skin's a dub but the textures won't render. I said the real you, talking Michael Fassbender, balls in they purse, crystal made him transgender. Put that on ice. That on ice. The loot was terrible at launch, and Crystal slowly made it worse over a series of patches. Diablo, Path of Exile, Destiny, Warframe, Borderlands, even even loose knowledge of a modern looter would have produced something better than this. Observing and replicating literally any live service would have forced more intelligent decisions 
than this. If Crystal had all the money in the world right now, I have no doubt that they would create a game that would have fit right into the gaming space 10 fucking years ago. Scott Amos, developers, defenders all keep telling lies to players and consumers, stringing them along for another year of soon and Spider-Man thumbnails. Oh, the bugs are fixed, but people's progress is still getting reset. Oh, it's getting better, but skins can't even work offline. Cloning labs in a few weeks? but then a year passes. Cosmetic rework coming soon, but then six months pass. Did I mention the loot sucks? In this looter, the loot sucks. And it's also a terrible live service, since live services consistently have uh, uh, content rolling out. Successful live services may host events that provide engaging and impressive experiences that players typically look back on fondly. When Crystal Dynamics drops an event, however, players can't even progress. Fact. Omega level threats are just recycled missions with a timer. Fact. And loot is unironically terrible as a reward from these, so what's the point? Crystal Dynamics can't even figure out things working in a single room and have the nerve to actually recycle that buggy content while silencing people, daring to ask for accessibility for colorblind people in this entirely red room. But even though Crystal's clearly broke and would continue making limp dick double archer decisions even if they were rich, factually describing what literally occurs is hate because these niggas professionally stay with a company crotch in their face, and that's our problem now, you know what I mean? Can I tell you something I would genuinely hate? Come over here, can I, can I tell you something? Someone sugarcoating the quality of my work, especially if it were mediocre, as any real creative would hate, because that cocked bullshit doesn't help me grow. This delicate treatment is suitable for children, intelligent people respect blunt honesty and not wasting time because talent often has a time limit and creatives seizing the opportunity and that small window to make some fucking shit happen are self-aware enough not to give or seek recognition for what they didn't earn. Are you niggas babies? Forgive me, I keep forgetting that in the fake, exclusively positive Disney shill world that you're trying to make money in, it's not about talent, skill, value, or appeal. It's mainly who can agree the loudest and saliva up them company balls. You are included because you are inclusive unless you disagree with us, in which case you're no longer an ally. Female. Y'all energy is identical to this fool who quit his job and was like, Logan Paul, you should hire me because, because I quit my job and, and I have big dreams. I want to live your life. You should hire me. And then he said, hey, what are you good at? And he was like, an embarrassment. And of course, I'm delighted. This is my existence, apparently. But the, the treat of watching validation-seeking deep-throaters embarrass themselves by exclusively praising and categorically denying the plight of the vocal community that they apparently exist outside of, you love to see it, alienating your own fucking community the same way Crystal Dynamics has by chasing off articulate and passionate players with incompetence and insinuations that, of course, criticism is hate. The very player base and fan base that you needed to make something successful. You tried to silence and dictate how they're allowed to speak regarding your game in the midst of this swamp full of ass. A swamp of asses. Look at you now. Two hour campaign panic dangling Doctor Strange and Wanda in the hope to dupe more people into this deliberately deceptively empty game. Limp to the end of the year fart out Spider-Man, and be forgotten, Crystal Dynamics Marvel's Avengers, as perfect a how not to make a superhero game as it gets. And it's a disgrace to competent, intelligently crafted, high quality products that are effortlessly evolving this medium. We don't want to go back in time here. And beta testers, you guys are all making me proud recognizing this pile for what it is. For the record, it was clear that at a time, I hope this game would become something more. But now, 
I don't want Strange in the game. I don't want Wanda in the game. I want this to see itself out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's a throwback clip to August 2020. But recognize this. Even if things may be working flawlessly for you, many people are experiencing crashes, stop motion frame rates, nauseating motion blurs, screen shakes, freezing, no FOV sliders, among other things, grant an experience in this sandbox that's like being stuck in quicksand. And no, recognition of these issues on a subreddit or on Twitter is not toxic or negative. Many of the most vocal people offering constructive criticism want this game to succeed more than you do. So say for instance you really don't care about emotes. If someone suggests an emote wheel so people can show off multiple emotes that they've unlocked or purchased, try not being a dick and saying, Oh, well, the emote system's fine. Why are you saying it sucks? I'm not saying it sucks. I'm saying it could be better. But if you immediately dismiss or downvote the suggestion, when it might actually incentivize people to spend and secure the longevity of this game, you're hurting yourself in confusion.